Uh, I have to say that is my my great honor to to actually share with you that's how I managed to not get a notification is as yeah it's really unbelievable to be here so uh thank you and uh first let me introduce myself a bit uh, my name is Anthony Fu and I'm a coding member of Vue, Vite and Nux and also I'm a creator of Vue Use, Vitesse, Uno CSS, Lightwave and Elk. I'm currently working at Nux Lab on the framework team and as you see that uh, I have a, a lot of projects to maintain and uh, some of them are big size with a, l a large, a wide range of audience and some of them are kind of medium and some of them are kind of upstreaming, uh, upstream tooling libraries that like a bit like smaller size. So uh, to in order to manage those repositories uh, across different organizations or uh, different teams, I kind of figure out a method that I, I would call it as notification driven development. So by that means is that uh, since you need to jump in between different contexts, between different projects, and I find that, okay, uh, if I need to focus, uh, if I need to decide which project to work or, or to working on, I think that notification can be a good, very good indicator to say that, uh, once you have uh, more notifications actively on a project, that usually means that the the project is more being needed or like is like having uh, more activities from the uh, from the community. And on the other hand, let's say if you have app streaming libraries and relatively small size, you don't get notifications because uh, sometimes that can be quite stable already and that doesn't require much effort to maintain it. So I kind of figure that way is like being reactive to the notifications and then you can know that's what you're focusing on. So um, as uh, just like as many of you that I got a lot of notifications every day. So uh, yeah, this, I think this image is like very scary as a very nightmare, but don't worry, uh, the number is made up, but uh, just for demonstration. But uh, as you can imagine that if we kind of leave, leave the notification there, we don't touch it, eventually that they will grow uh, every day and eventually we'll hit that point that we kind uh, like out of our control feel over home, like we don't have capability to manage those like 2000, 3000 notifications uh, or even more. Yeah, I've, I've heard that you kind of share uh some incredible numbers okay so uh the measure i would take is like i do inbox zero every day okay uh at least i try to achieve inbox zero every day so i i won't succeed every every day but that's something i would like to try so um a quick questions uh how many of you still remember that how github's inbox like uh inbox empty inbox in GitHub looks like. You can you can leave some comments in the chat or or even you can describe that what it looks like if you still remember it. And okay. And I will reveal them. I will reveal the answer. So uh, it's a octer cat with a squirrel. So let me show you. So it all looks like that if you manage to to import, to zero out your inbox. A GitHub will show this picture to you. So that can be your goal to say, okay, I want to see this picture every day and I would try to zero out my notification. So that's, okay, that's a, that's a goal you can try. And okay, so that's maybe talk about how, how we can do that. So yeah, uh, sorry, uh, let's talk about that's why we are doing that beforehand. So. Uh, the first pick, the, the fourth point I would like to pick is like being responsive. So as you see that, uh, it's very important. This, this is one of the important way to get the community more involved or the contributors to, uh, feel more engaged by response, uh, by giving them the response in time. So, uh, this can help you to, uh, to, to maintain a, a better relationship between your contributors and also make them more willing to, to doing more contributions in the future. 
And also, uh, doing inbox zero actually means that you are keeping your maintenance work in control. So let's say every day you will have 50 notifications and that's all the, the, the maintenance work you would like, you would need to do. And yeah, in some cases it, that's still a lot, but compared to like 2000, 3000, that's still being manageable and you know what is going on. So that's, I think that's a good way to say, uh, in the long term. So every day you, in, you, you, in, you zero out your inbox and you don't accumulate tax for tomorrow. So, and you, you don't have a leftover from the, from last week, from last month or last year. So that's also, uh, one way to say, and also in that sense, naturally, you know, you know better what you're focusing on since you, are dealing with a, a relatively small scope of your maintenance work. So, um, uh, before talking about the tips, uh, like how I manage notifications, uh, I would like to say that, uh, it's actually, there are some ways to reduce notification created beforehand. As you know, that writing good contribution guide or creating several different, uh, issue form or issue template, etc. And I bet that you are already very familiar with it. And the tip I would like to share is, uh, a magic repo called dot GitHub that GitHub support is that, uh, you can create a, a repo named dot GitHub under your organizations or under your, your personal namespace. And you put that, uh, the contribution guide, the issue templates inside that repo, and it will magically ap apply to all the rep repositories inside the organization or your personal account. So this will help you to maintain those files and without like duplications in, in several places you sometimes forgot to update. So of course, then you can also have, uh, you can also, you can always override it by providing an inline issue template or the files you would like, you would like to do for specific repo. So, uh, that's the, the tip beforehand and then the, t the tip I'm going to take is like you turn off your notifications and quite a day. So you don't have a notification to deal with and that's all. And that's all for my talk today. Thank you. And yeah, and of course I'm joking, but, uh, actually I mean it to say that instead of that notification coming to you, you should seek for notifications. So the first is like, if you still have email notifications or app push notifications on, I would highly recommend you to turn it off. And instead you should look for notifications proactively. So you can either use GitHub notification inbox and, or you can try Volta, which is, uh, uh, which is a tool that helps you to manage your issues, your project with milestones, something like that. Uh, that uh, our team is building on. So it's free for open source projects. So uh, I would recommend you to give it a try to see if that would work, work for your uh, workflow. And, but today I would like to like focusing more on the, the GitHub native notification part. So uh, the, second, the second tip is that you can group your notifications by repositories instead of time. So this is re relatively a small tip that when you go to your notification inbox, there's a, there's a small button on the top, right. To say a group by not, uh, repository and you click it at it will like divide it, divide your notification into multiple groups or sections with the, the title of each repositories names, uh, on the, on the left. And this, this way you actually see that more clearly that's how, uh, how many notifications for each repo and also uh, it's helped you to focusing on that repos for a while to say that I'm, I'm zeroing out this three notification for, for this repo. And this can reduce a lot of time for you to doing the, the context swifting, uh, to avoid doing, uh, to avoid doing a lot of context swifting and, and that, and I find that th this really saved me a lot of time, uh, in order to say, um, to zero out my inbox. And then the third point is that to know what to focus, uh, 
So what I would do is like I will filter out some noise notifications. It's like not all the notifications that are relevant to me. And I also doing that to prioritize my focus uh, better to say the to, to dealing with the things that that's uh, more important. So in practice, uh, in, in, in practice, I would, I would dismiss issues or pull requests that are already closed or merged and that I haven't participated in. So, uh, in the other words, it's like, I will trust my team. Uh, if, if the, if, if someone in my team to come, come, come to that issues to already have the discussions and the market that are closed, and I don't, I don't take time to, to read them through, uh, I, I can't trust my team's decision. So this can save me a lot of time to say, uh, going through the, uh, each, uh, each issues, uh, if like three of you in the team, that three of you need to scan that close issue. Some of the issue are not really worth time, uh, worth effort to, to say, to looking at. So, and then I would dismiss, a a, a bunch of kind of the notification directly. Uh, the, the one, the one, the obvious one is from both. So we will have a, we'll have a both like deployment both to say, okay, your deployment is successful. Or we'll have some boy, uh, we'll have some both to, to automatically reply to the issues to say, uh, you are missing a reproduction link or you are missing some more information for that, those notifications, I will dismiss it directly and wait until for the, for human response. And then like some, some, a bit like small things is like new commits put you to a working progress pull request. You will still get notifications, but I don't feel that is more relevant. I will, I will prefer when they have some comments or something to say, okay, this is ready to review or something. And then that's small things like GitHub action canceled. You will still, you will get a notifications. And there is a, uh, a lot of, a lot of small things that's, uh, not really common to see but it still add up to some sort of the notification numbers. So at the beginning, I will do it manually. I will, I will check the, I will check the issues and say, okay, this fall into this category and I don't need to care about it. And I will dismiss it using the, the, the check. There's a, there's a check button to mark a notification as a down. And then I, at some point I kind of figure out, okay, this is still require a lot of effort for me to, to label them manually, to say, to, to dismiss them manually. So then I decide to say, okay, I'm going to write a user script. So the, it's open source in the, this repo and, uh, user script is a, is a Chrome, is the a snippet of JavaScript that's you injecting using the, the Chrome extension to do some text locally. And before you give it a try, I would like to mention that it's very hacky and opinionated. But I wish this could be a good starting point for you to, to write your custom, uh, to, to write your, your customizations on how you manage notifications. And what it does is like, this is a before and I click it, this is the after. What it does is like, it automatically dismiss unrelated notification I just mentioned. So it will check uh, a few, cat it will have a few rules that you can, you can set and I will dismiss them. So you, you don't see them at all. It will automatically dismiss. And then I will colorize the notification type. As you see that a review request and being marked as purple and mention an author I will mark as green. And this would help, this would help me a lot to, to, to say that which, uh, issues or which notification is more important for me to prioritize first. I will check them first. I will, uh, I will have expectations. I think that's a, a bit like, uh, uh, the, the live improvement, something it's not really important, but, uh, after all that you try that use, I kind of feel that's a, a little like a production boost, a productivity boost. And also I have to do a single instance of notification tab. I also find that I kind sometimes, or maybe often create multiple tabs, notification tab in my, in my, in my browser and each of them are create at different time and, and think, things that, uh, GitHub don't actually, uh, automatically refresh it. When you go back, you will sometimes see that the some notification you already like handled, you already deal with. 
but still there. So that can be a bit confusing. So what a script does is like it will check if there is an existing notification tab. And if, when you create a new tab, it'll close the old one. And also it will do auto, automatically refresh. Uh, when you have a new notification, it will refresh. When you go to that page, uh, from the other page, you are, you are monthly refresh. So it keeps you uh, always have the, the latest notifications and in one place. So uh, that's for me to say, this is really helping me a lot to uh, on how uh, how we deal with the, how, 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 I, how I can uh, manage to, to deal with those notifications. So yeah, I think I would like to take this chance to have a small wish list to GitHub. It's like, I really want GitHub notification API, please. So we have an API for all the things, but only for notifications. So uh, at, I think at some point that we, we can still like simulate notifications by uh, using webhooks that uh, new issue created or something, but I still wish that we could have an API for notification, then we could write more robust algorithm to say how we manage those notifications. And uh, if that do that uh, for the GitHub UI web, I would like to have a fine grain notification filter that you, maybe you can filter out both or by the type of notifications, or maybe filter out some random things from random repos that it had just happened to add your 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 handle, and also like I would like to see if that possible to have a more uh, interactive notification inbox. I think currently it's more like a uh, MPA which is rendered by the backend. And you need to refresh the whole page again and again in order to get the new notifications. I'd like to see if there is a possible to have a live update or just avoid hard refresh. And uh, so that's probably all. So to wrapping up, uh, I would like to say that uh, the the goal is not to to really uh, zero out your inbox, but uh, instead it's like to keep. Uh, maintain the scope more manageable and don't get it, don't make it grow out of control. So I think that like zero, inbox zero is one of way of doing that. And in terms of the notifications, I will apply a strategy called uh, reply and forget. So uh, I will, uh, when the new notification come, I will reply with my comments and I will dismiss that notifications and forget about it and move on to the other text. And new notification will come uh, the new notification will come up once you get replies. And this could help you to reduce a bit of frustrations for the long distance back and forth discussions. And sometimes like you ask for reproductions and two, two weeks after they will send the link to you. And I think that doing that uh, uh, notification driven development can help that a little bit. And of course, use tool to help you focus uh, to manage those things. And I think the most important part is like enjoying it, enjoying what you do and uh, to keep a, a kind of a good balance between your, your work and life. So that's, that's all for my talk. Thank you. Yeah. And 